Uh, Mr. Tom Carpenter, uh, Analog Solutions. Uh, now, there's been a little bit of teasing and trailing going on, and you've brought yes. the results and the fruits of your labour yes, here to Cincy, that's right? right? Yeah, uh, new synthesizer fuse box. Um, kind of a year in development. Um, spent a lot of time working on completely new circuits, revising old circuits, introducing new ones. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a lot of time with pen and paper just you know, planning what circuits, features are needed before um, actually, you know, starting. So, what, okay, let's start, let's start. What, what is it? Give us a kind of, po <coughs> it's a three os I see, I yeah. see three oscillators, right? Yeah, it's a free, uh, it's a free oscillator mono synth uh, with the kind of, um, you know, the analog solutions, vintage sound that people love so much. Um, I, I'm kind of known for just doing things the very old way, the analog way, without too much digital intervention. Is that what makes it sound authentic like that? I think it really helps, yeah. You know, it's, um, I, I don't aim for the perfect sawtooth. Um, you know, you want that little bit of distortion in, in the waveforms, um, you know. Uh, That's interesting, because yeah. whenever, whenever I review a synth, people go, put it on the scope, put it on the yeah, scope, and I'm yeah. always really surprised yeah. at how non-traditional many waveforms are, right? Well, I've had this discussion with the, the really technical people who say, you know, do you, put the, the waveform on the scope and see how perfect you can get it and it, it's more a case of well just does it sound great you know right you know right, and right. that's that's really with the synth it's, it's what it's all about okay me. so three yep. oscillators um we've got squares uh, yep. two, square two. the first and then yeah the first two oscillators yes uh saw and you know square pulse width uh type thing vco3 has also a triangle wave and partly part of the reason for that is because it can be um, tuned low to LFO frequencies and be used as an extra LFO in addition so to the... So quite sort of mini in, uh, in approach in a way, yeah, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that, that's kind of probably one of the most well-known synths of doing that. And I think in the very first draft of this synth, I wasn't going to have a separate LFO. It was going to be two oscillators and a third oscillator, which can be... Then I thought, and people will want an LFO, so... Which you also have, Yes, right? yes. It's always this, uh, you've got the business side, which is saying, you know, everything costs money and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You've got to look at the retail point. And then there's the musician, the synth enthusiast, that says, just keep going, add everything you want. So um, I see on these waves, that's an interesting, so you've got two what look like kind of sign, yeah, sign triangle-ish. Yeah, this, uh, it has, the LFO has a sine wave and a square wave, okay? Um, and if you want sawtooth triangle you can use vco3 um, the the lfo also has a delay in it so when you hit a midi key you can decide when the the lfo is right. introduced and then so that that cutoff knob is that routing to the cutoff or is there a cutoff to the actual right LFO way? yes this this allow this is there's a certain amount of pre-patching you can override all of the pre-patching but you can straight away modulate the filter without right, having okay, to patch so. and also the pulse width on all three oscillators so if you're doing a typical big lead and you just want pulse width on all three you don't have to patch up three but you of course you can patch them individually defeat well. that or just patch yeah okay and then we've also got the uh the mixer here which is uh yeah gives you all the three and so you switch this the, 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 yeah, the so in the mixer. That, they, they're all, uh, well, oscillators one and two are pre-patched, but you can defeat that once again and isolate them if need be. Take the waveforms out if you want to, uh, introduce your own signals. VCO3 has to be patched in, partly because it uses an LFO and you might want to patch it elsewhere. Uh, you've got your sub and your noise. Uh, sub is kind of always a must-have for me because it's, you flick the switch and it's there it instant base, you know, devastation. <laughs> devastation, I like that. Cool. Well, I, I, before we get to on too many more features, can you just get something running? Can we have a listen to what it's uh, yep, what okay. it sounds like? Let's see what we've got. So there's a bit of noise on there. Uh, almost percussive. Let's just start with one oscillator, I think. I'll try not to mess with the levels too much. Right, so we're listening to a square wave of oscillator one there, right? 
Yeah, okay, so this is, yeah, square oscillator one. Okay. Got a fairly clean sound at the moment. Yeah, because you were when we were talking earlier, you were saying you like to drive things a little bit into the mixer to give it that extra burn, right? Yeah, so um, typically I, I, on my designs, I override, and not override, overdrive the mixer just enough to give it an edge. Right, yeah. okay. Uh, so, straight away. So that was a bit of a cross mod, right? Yeah, there was a bit of cross mod there, which just added an extra edge. And then if we go to three, just, uh, just deepens it a bit more. And then there we go, yeah. Go on, switch the sub on then. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> yes, and it makes all the difference. Is, mean, that uh, is that derived from any one of the oscillators? Which oscillator is that That's derived? coming from three. Right, okay. Um, now, I intentionally chose to put it on a switch. The switch has got two levels, um, which you know, is, a, is enough, I feel. But I wanted a switch where you just uh, hit the switch. And there, there it was. Yeah, yes. yeah, no, okay. Got yeah, it. you know. So, I mean, um, uh, all right, let's get on to the... Uh, excuse me. Tangling. I keep tangling yeah, myself. Okay. So, okay, so we've also got a multi-mode filter. This is very much a sort of SEM type of uh, affair, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I first used that filter uh, 15 years ago in one of my early products, and it's it's morphed morphed over the last, let's say, 15 years. It's 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 still the same filter, but completely different chips now. So many values have been altered over the years. It's uh, so. Have it's, you have you taken a, have you taken a filter and make it made it your own? <laughs> Kind of, yes. <laughs> In the words of kind of Britain's Got Talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I've made it my own, so. Um, you know, it's I, I do use this filter design a lot because it's just so versatile. Uh, I am a big fan of the, you know, the ladder filter also, which will make an appearance in some future products. Um, okay. Which, uh, this, uh, form, this form factor here is, I've got a series of, uh, I call them simp blocks. So a series of uh, analog filter boxes, basically not filter boxes, yeah. effects boxes. So yeah, okay. some have got filters, some have got echo ring mods. Um, they'll all have LFO in there for modulation and other things. Uh, but I've also got a monosynth coming in this size format, right, okay. uh, which will have the Curtis filter in there. Um, so there's a lot. Yeah. I mean, we've, that, that's the sort of basic synth board. That's, we've, also yeah, that's a, basic. we've also got an LFO here, which we've just looked at. But, but you've got. Uh, Envelopes so, arpeggiators. Let's turn this down a sec. So, uh, an arpeggiator, kind of, it's not a Roland arpeggiator, but that Roland style where it's nice, uh, you've got the range, so you can have it repeat an octave higher right. and an octave lower. How many notes will it uh, respond to um, maximum? It's 16 notes. Oh, wow, okay. So but it's got a nice little feature in there where it plays the notes back in the order that you played them. So you can use it as sequence Yeah, like. so it can be used as a 16 step sequencer as well, like a little simple digital sequencer. Um, and all of the little clocky things can be clocked externally uh, from LFO or MIDI note zero. So if you're using um, Logic or whatever, it's easy to make a clock track using MIDI note oh, so zero. So you just trigger note <coughs> zero zero and zero at the tempo you want. Yeah? And it's something not done a lot, but it's it's more versatile than MIDI clock. Well, I guess you could use that to track, yeah. uh, say, a drummer or something if he was triggering a bass drum. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You could use it to Anything like that. Um, but it doesn't always have to be sixteenths. You can make a you know a rhythm with the clock signal, That's and an then idea, yeah. you can mute it when you want, which you can't mute MIDI clock. It's always going. So that's a, a nice idea, that. Um, yeah. So you can do that with the the arpeggiator and also the patinator, as we call it. Patinator. Now patinator. The, the, is that is, is that a new trademark word? Uh, <laughs> it should be really. I'm sure the, uh, the trademark cost a, quite a few thousand, but. Uh, so what's it? This is basically a four-step, four, step, four it's, notes. Yes, CV it's quite deceiving. So it's four CV uh, pots. Right. But Un unquantized or quantized? Un unquantized. Yeah. Um, now, you, you can take signals out and patch them where you want, but they're also routed to pitch and filter cutoff. Um, 
although it's four CVs, this is where it starts to get complicated, it's easy for me, there are eight gate steps. So you've got four CVs, but eight gate steps. So you can kind of get them... It's polyrhythmic. Polyrhythmic, yeah, that's, that's the word I was looking for earlier. Oh, thank you. So you can end up with patterns that sound longer than eight steps because and that, and that's each you can, cycle... And that's something you can vary with these yeah. knobs. So, yeah, so the two knobs here, let's get a bit of audio. So if we turn... So the left knob is kind of doing the even steps out of the eight steps, it turns them on and off. Uh, the right is doing the odd steps. Right, so that's... So as you turn the left one, like, you start to get... Is it like a probability? It's, um... It's like, uh, I suppose, binary, really. You're sweeping through the ones and zeros. Right. So left is all zeros and right is all ones. But the two knobs are kind of interlaced. So this one's doing the, if you like, the even bits, and this is doing the odd bits. So you've got four beats there. And then as you turn this one, you start injecting beats between them. And it's just a really easy way to uh, turn the steps on and off, the gates on and off, the triggers if you like. Rather than having eight switches, this is just a more intuitive way of building the pattern up. And then uh, there okay, you're so you're fading, you're sort of fading in and out resolution steps effectively. Yeah, and then if you let's say you've got the toggle switches here which will skip or reset, so we've got reset, center is kind of ignore and then skip. So now we've got three steps, but three, uh, three pitch, three pitch three pitches, pitches, but, with but eight, six, steps. eight steps. Interesting. So I guess, I guess it's sort of performance based from that point of view, right? Yeah, it's um, you can use it for live performance if you you know you could have it playing a rhythm pattern, or obviously. Um, and also, it doesn't have to play notes. It could just play CDs yeah. for sequencing. So at the moment, it's on pitch. So we take. Oh, that's nice. But, okay, so let's do do. It's a bit quiet for me, man. It's getting noisier in here, isn't it? Yes, that's inevitably the way it seems to me, so. Right, that's the bottom knob. I'd say it's uh, Turning it up in situ. Cut. Okay. Right. Here, there, it's doing. Um, it's doing uh, cut off. Right, so you can use it for some quite interesting stuff. Okay. So those are those two. That are, there's some other stuff here that you've also got. Okay. Yeah. VCA uh, is fairly straightforward. Uh, headphone amp uh, through uh, EG2. External CV. Uh, this is just a very simple transposer. So you can set your notes up here. They're unquantized, but um... right. So you can have preset patterns. Okay. So again, more sort of performance yeah. based stuff. But to make it more interesting for effects. Uh, you've got a switch here which decides which oscillators it's going to transpose. So at the moment it's transposing all three oscillators, but if you have it down, it won't transpose three. Ah, so, that, so you can get like drones and patterns. Yeah. yeah okay. we, uh, I appreciate it's not necessarily the easiest environment to demonstrate the nuance of. Uh, no, no, you're not going to get the nuances, but uh, um, but it means you can have that droning third oscillator staying at the same pitch and transpose, but also if you've got some kind of cross-modulation going on, as three is right, offset from two, it'll kind of, it'll get kind of different ring mods type sounds, you know. So, um, and you've also got a MIDI CV in here as well, which is the, where's the, where's the MIDI come in? Has got uh, the MIDI comes in, because, um, well, if you look over there, there's two form factors. The standard is my, you know, trademark vertical synth. Okay, we've got logo on the side, we've got... Uh, the back's quite beautiful in my opinion. But well, let's have a look then. Ta-da! Oh, yeah. All yeah, right, nice so, branding. Yeah. Um, in, out and through, good move. In, out and through. Oh, that's a good point. So, the out socket, 
will transmit the arpeggiator notes. So you can uh, yeah, use the arpeggiator, play a chord, it'll do the CV for you, but it'll pump them out as MIDI notes as well, so you can control another sim. Ah, okay. So, um, so the, yeah, this is standard. I, my vertical uh, format. This one's been flipped around. Um, so we've got branding, if you like, on the back. I got it. Sockets are here. Now, it's unusual, but it's actually really useful because it's not a lot of slack here, but uh, find your hot patching. You haven't got to kind of start doing all this. You just lift it up, go like that, hug it in and put it down. So it's actually worked out really well. Uh, and it keeps the back panel really tidy. Yeah, nice. So you can just, um, I just come outside and... Okay, so, so, so tell me, um, wh when are you aiming to have this in production? And, you know, what sort of price point are you going to try and hit? Uh, yeah, probably a couple of months. I'm, like, very busy ordering parts. I mean, it's... Uh, anyone that runs business building products is the sheer amount of cost of thousands of switches, thousands of those switches, thousand pots. So they're all being ordered, uh, wait for them to be shipped. Um, so about a couple of months, I guess. And the magic number? I don't have an exact number, but have you got a kind of an estimated it's about range? Nine hundred is plus yeah. fat. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's less than I thought it would be. So yeah, it's actually yeah. Quite, for, um, for an analog solution. Uh, uh, yeah. So that's yeah. that's that's not yeah. a bad price, and, right? Yeah, um, and you know the prices are of what they are. Just it's just a huge cost of manufacturing. It's, this isn't me being greedy, it's, it's the real world of what they cost to build. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah. but I think nowadays yeah. people are prepared to pay for something special. I mean, yes, yeah. Yeah. there's always people that are going to go, oh, it's too expensive, and it doesn't yeah. do, it's not yeah. a workstation, or yeah. it doesn't yeah. have an edge yeah. or white feature. Yeah. I mean, you know, without, uh, without you guys, there wouldn't be anything interesting going on. Yeah, that is, that is, it's like, um, you know, the car makers like Morgan or, you know, Cater them, you know, you've still got these uh, small companies doing the interesting stuff, you know, and if you just need a workhorse, you know, you go and buy a Ford, don't you? But if you want something special, then you've got to seek out the, the, the boutique companies, you know, like yeah, I, I think that's a, very, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Tom, thank you very much indeed. That's great. Good to speak to you. Thank you.